Hello, good morning to all. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights brought to you by Oenda, presented by myself, Kelvin Wong, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. So very good morning to all. Today will be Thursday, the 12th of October. Wow, pretty much uh, very fast for the week passes uh, with lots of things happening on the ground. So uh, before we start our Daily Dose of Market Insights, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, uh, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, nor financial advice or recommendation for any investment product. Any forecast, prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. All right, so as usual, this will be our three, three key takeaway uh, for our gist of our three dose of market insights will be a recap of key highlights and events that took shape yesterday. What's the next key data releases and events to watch out for? And as well as uh, this uh, short term technical analysis outlook on the broad-based asset classes covering from FX, stock indices, and commodities. All right, so without further ado, let's take a look at recap of uh, what happened uh, yesterday, the key highlights and events that took shape yesterday. So let's start with the key economic data first. Okay, so let me share my screen over here. All right, so now let's focus more on the screen instead. Uh. So let me hide my camera so that you all could see much clearer okay so yesterday's uh key economic data releases was this uh factory gate prices all right so very interestingly right if you look at the factory gate prices on the core uh the ppi uh, uh we call it producer price index so this is what i call uh cost of goods that is being uh, uh we call it uh, required for businesses to operate to do business, uh, be it in the services sector or be it in the manufacturing sector. So what we could see over here, uh, what's interesting over here is the PPI, month-on-month uh, -month PPI actually surpassed above expectation. 0.5% for September, uh, consensus only expecting 0.3%, all right? So uh, even the core PPI as well, month-on-month, -month, the one that is stripping off, excluding food and energy, also surpassed slightly 0.3% versus expectation of 0.2%. Okay, then right now, if I were to actually get the year on year one, it actually increases uh, pretty much uh, a high round as well. So this year on year right, trend, excluding energy and uh, food, that means the year on year. So year on year, it actually smooth out uh, the cyclical month on month uh, seasonality noises. So I could see over here is that it increases 2.3% versus uh, to a 2.7 percent, pardon me, market came in at 2.7 percent year on year for September, above August 2.5 percent, and above expectation of 2.3 percent. So if you look at the trend of this PPI data right now, it actually starts to tick up. Uh. So this is the highest level since May. Yeah, since May. Uh. So it starts to actually tick up already. So in terms of the year on year trend, or uh, this is also excluding food and energy prices okay so what you could see over here is that uh there is some pressure on uh, the factory gate prices in terms of inflation pressure so what what it means that at this point in time inflation risk is still in the market okay so if inflation risk is still in the market there is also a higher chance that the fed will start to maintain their interest rate at a higher level for a longer period of time so that actually uh that story it's actually much, uh, pretty much uh, 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 transpired in the Fed meeting yesterday. So yesterday, the Fed also released their meetings for the previous FOMC minutes. So the Fed minutes are for the previous FOMC meeting. So they say that flag high rates for some time while reach shift. Okay, so they say that, uh, so it's pretty much a, 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 a convey the same message that the Federal Reserve officials uh the fed speak that was seen in the start of this week on the aggregate saying that they are in position to proceed carefully so meaning that more or less and also note the risk of both over and under tightening so it's a rather situation that for sure overall 
the thinking of the Federal Reserve uh, minds right now is more or less we are coming to the end of this rate hike cycle. Okay, so at least one more rate hike, that's the most, okay, before the rate hike cycle ends. So the next big question over here is that they do want to keep rates for a longer period of time and they need time to assess before they are comfortable in cutting rates, okay, because they, they know that the risk is actually balanced at this moment in time, okay. And also, the, fun, the, the thing over here is that markets right now are pretty optimistic, saying that the rate cut should come pretty soon, as early as the first half of this year. So the reason over here, despite the PPI number that is very seen very strongly, that the, the data that was actually, uh, 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 came in much stronger than expected, but market actually reacted pretty strongly in terms of the price action. Okay, so the S&P actually managed to reduce the intraday losses. So at one at one point in time during the mid session, all the four major indices are in the red, close to about negative, uh, I think three to negative five percent. But throughout the end, the market managed to rebound strongly to, to close positive at the close. Okay, 0 0.43 on the S&P, Nasdaq 0 0.72, the Dow Jones, the one pretty much last luster, 0 0.19, the Russell negative, uh, uh, they managed to close at the positive uh, uh, note towards the end of the closing session. So if you look at the performance of these four major benchmark indices, uh, it seems to us that the mega cap stocks is actually uh, 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 pulling up the index again, all right? Uh, because don't forget the mega cap stocks over here, that means you talk the technology sector, your favorite, your Apple, Amazon, Nvidia, and uh, the, the Tesla has a heavy weightage on the SPX and the Nasdaq. So if you look at the other two now Jones Industrial Average, this is the, uh, we call it the cash index that represents the US session only. Price action has been pretty much lackluster, showing another sign of a bullish, a bearish reversal candlestick pattern right at the 20 day moving average. All right, so this is like a hanging man over here. That also for the Russell 2000, a kind of a spinning top as well, okay. So, Overall, uh, there is actually no clear signs of a uh, bullish, a uh, very strong bullish momentum that's being fit into the US benchmark stock indices if I were to decipher closely the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average, all right? So this will happen the NASDAQ. Uh, so NASDAQ over here is still trying to test that uh, this former swing high area here, 15,245, okay, now piercing above the 50-day moving average already. Okay, whereas for the S&P 500, it's still below the 50-day moving average at 4,400. So for sure, right, if you look at the S&P heat map, right? Okay, so the bulk of it is actually the mega cap that is actually pushing up the market yesterday. Okay, so not in terms of breath, it doesn't really show uh, across the board uh, bullish momentum that like I explained earlier, all right? So there, there could be still a risk that this ongoing movement on the Nasdaq and the S&P and towards the, 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 the rest of the, the two, the other two, Russell 2000 and Dow Jones, this particular two week of up move in the in this benchmark US indices, it's still, there's a possibility that it could be still a counter trend rally. That means on the bigger picture, there could be a, still a potential bearish reversal on the cuts. Okay, for the benchmark US indices. Okay, so that's for the, the indices story. Then uh, coming over here, the other news I'm sure over here is more closer to Asia is, uh, so there is some signs of bullishness up from China in terms of intervention, either indirect or the indirect or direct intervention from top policy makers. So this one came in late at night, uh, Singapore time. All right, so over here, right, it was late in the evening, there was a report from Bloomberg saying that uh, Yesterday, China's sovereign funds has been instructed to buy shares in the big four banks. So apparently right now, right, there is some kind of what I call uh, intervention up from Ch under the instruction or under the blessing of China top policy maker to create a kind of positive feedback loop into the Chinese uh, stock market. So uh, for sure, that's why you start to see the uh, Hong Kong uh, stock, the Hansing Index, they actually rallied uh, during the uh, U.S. session, you know that Hansen index futures actually also trade during the U.S. session. All right, so that's why uh, if you look at uh, Oanda's trading platform, the Hong Kong 33 index, that we track the movement of the Hansen futures, it actually show a sharp uh, rally during the U.S. session as well due to this uh, positive news flow. So later, uh, given that the fact that we now start to see a lot of this kind of uh, 
potential uh, intervention either indirectly or, or, or directly from a China top uh, through the various uh, China state agency or what I call that uh, state related enterprises. Uh, potentially, it may start to create a bit of a substantial positive feedback loop into the China and its proxy financial markets. Okay, so later we we'll take a look at the technicals of the Hansing Index. Okay, so that is uh, the key uh, we call it, uh, event that took shape uh, and news flow that took shape yesterday. So uh, one thing to look out for is for today, uh, key economic calendar uh, will be for sure this uh, over at. Uh, Europe over here, there is this GDP month on month data release uh, for UK uh, at 2 p.m. Singapore time, something to look out for. Uh, then as well as uh, the key one over here is uh, you have this US core inflation data and or inflation data as well, core and core and inflation, the core is X energy, X food, uh, that's most market participants are having a close eye, close eye to watch on. And also, uh, that will be out at 8.30 p.m. Singapore time. So these are the two key economic events to look out for that could actually trigger, uh, we call it a uh, volatile movement in the market. So let's look at the expectation. Both for the core inflation rate year on year, market is expecting below last month's figure at 4.1%. Okay, last month was 4.3%. So even uh, the uh, inflation rate year on year, one excluding uh, including food and energy also market expecting to slip slightly below uh, one basis point at 3.6 percent year on year versus uh, last month august of 3.7 percent so it's a rather what i call uh, uh, uh we call it uh optimism that inflation has starts to uh trickle down further in us that means inflation pressure start to ease off but market participants may be over emphasized uh, on this uh, slowdown in inflation US, given the fact that the PPI numbers yesterday came in above expectation. So something to look out for. And what's interesting over here is that market still buying the fact that the Fed itself is getting, will be getting more dovish as the months ahead. So if you look at the Fed funds futures right now, okay, let's look at the, this is the CME uh, Fed fund tool. So it's a very uh, good indication of the futures pricing. That means what market participants uh, based on market-based transacted futures price, that means on the Fed fund futures pricing. So on the next meeting on the 1st of November, market is only expecting 8.5% of a rate hike. One more rate hike. Okay, whilst the Federal Reserve officer has said that there could be still a possibility of a rate hike, doesn't mean that uh, November there will be no rate hike, but market start to price now. Okay, initially it was 23%, it start to reduce down to 8.5%. Very little, so almost like a saying that there is no chance of a hike in November. But however, the even the December meeting over here, okay, the possibility is still high is about 26.1% for another rate hike of 25 basis point, but it has been reduced uh, about close to six. Yeah, six, uh, uh, five basis point from 32% 30, 32 a week ago. So if you see over here that market participants seems to be very optimistic uh, of uh, getting a more, uh, of a more dovish Fed. But based on the current Fed speak over here is that they actually painted a more of a balanced picture. And in terms of the first rate cut, the first rate cut market are still uh, pretty much uh, optimistic. If I look at the probability table, okay, are pretty optimistic that the first rate cut to ease at 65% should come in in the first half of the year. That means in as early as June, FOMC minute. FMC meeting, pardon me. So uh, it's rather optimistic over here. So the key event, the key uh, guidance will come in during the November and December meeting, whether what's the latest stance from the Fed. And also uh, we also got to take into account of the current situation in Middle East as well, that could actually start to uh, see a potential uh, uh, spike up again in oil price if the if joint political tension starts to, uh, we call it uh, flare up or start to spread to the rest of the Middle Eastern region. Okay, so this is the the, the fundamentals uh, or, or data that uh, that to look out for that are, and some sharing as well. So now immediately let's go to the technical picture. So let's start with the FX market first. So over the FX market, right? Let's look at the uh, current situation of the FX market. Okay, so this is the okay. Let's start off with the one month rolling performance as of today. So what we could see over here is that the dollar continue to weaken 
uh, given the fact that uh, this also starts to uh, be what I call intercorrelated uh, with the Fed fund futures pricing, indicating to us that uh, market participants are actually expecting a much more dovish Fed in the weeks and the months ahead. So this gives rise to a what I call soft, further softening of the dollar across uh, the board. So the one that is weakening the most is uh, against a C against the uh, proxy that's related to CNH. So uh, yeah, even though oil prices came down a fair bit yesterday, but it's still kind of pretty much resilient above $80 per barrel. So uh, what we could see is also supporting the dollar, the Canada dollar as well. But the CNH due to the fact that uh, it's pretty much stabilized at this point in time against the dollar due to this uh, direct and indirect, uh, we call it physical uh, stimulus or intervention uh, to stabilize the financial market in China. So that actually causes the CNH to actually, uh, the weakness of the CNH that was seen three months ago to get uh, stopped against the dollar. So with that, uh, with the CNH weakness getting stopped at this point in time, so that actually kind of benefited the Aussie and the Kiwi as well, uh, as, as well as Sing, given that these three currencies are close proxy with the CNH. Okay, so uh, the dollar still, uh, yes, it's going to weaken, but it's not, it's, 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 uh, but the, against the European currency, it still continues to uh, pretty, uh, not that underperform against the batch of currency over here, that means against the CAD, the Chinese yen, the Sing dollar, the Aussie and the Kiwi. So uh, what's interesting over here is that the dollar yen going to help pretty resilient, that means uh, right now, in fact, at the rolling one pound performance, the dollar Yen, the dollar is seems to be strongest against the yen right now. All right, so that's this one month. So let's look at the five day. So five day take into account of the last five trading session. So I could see that the dollar is pretty much resilient against the Japanese yen. It's more like a sideways movement, and uh, but weakest over here. So it started to turn a bit against the sterling, against the Swiss franc, and somehow against the euro is the middle over here. Aussie came okay, also a middle ground. Okay, so I could see over here right. Uh, Perhaps right, there could be some initial crosses that I can look at, I can pair with the yen against this bunch of currency over here. Would there be a continuation of a yen weakness or would there be a potential what I call mean reversion of this yen weakness into play? Okay, but sometimes you know that moment effect is still it's a big sideways movement now for dollar yen. Now. It doesn't mean that dollar yen uh, has started to see a very clear uptrend on the upside momentum. So it could revert down and cover this initial gap that was seen about uh that was seen in the last yeah last 24 hours yeah it could cover the gap over here between here to here okay so something interesting cross pair that i tend to look at uh, as well so let's start with the major fx pair first okay so let's start with the the euro okay the sterling dollar so this sterling dollar right continue to actually uh bounce higher and trade in a series of higher high and higher low and also now pretty much resilience above the 20 day moving average. Okay, so what we could see right, all in all right, the price action refused to actually verge down. Okay, uh, given the fact that uh, it's been supported, uh, even though PPI numbers are getting strong in the US. So what I do over here is right, uh, for today, I will tend to have a much more uh, bullish bias uh, condition in the short term, but I need to have a, a clear breakout or above to actually reinforce my this bullish bias condition view which is the trigger level at 1.2355 so that was yesterday short term pivotal resistance so if we manage to see a clearance above 1.2355 then potentially right, we could see a further push up to retest the 200 day moving average at 1.2425 so using 1.2250 to actually uh, 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 hold any potential uh, uh, pullback at this juncture for today so this will be my key short term pivotal uh, support level also confluence with the 20 day moving average now acting as a support as well okay so however if we start to see a clearance uh, and a hourly close below 1.2250 then uh, this uh, bullish short term bullish momentum that is being uh, inherent right now in a sterling dollar will be invalidated to see a slight in the first step to retest this uh, near term support range at 1.2165 followed by uh, slash 1.2165 slash 1.2110 all right so very pretty much very similar on the euro uh, dollar configuration as well also going to hold shape higher high and higher low and the rsi is on the hourly so doesn't show any clear bearish divergence uh. it's going to actually uh hover in a, in a kind of a so in fact if you were to draw a upward sloping line from here okay 
it's going to help like a parallel support at around the 45 level. Okay, on the RSI, no clear signs of a bearish divergence even on the hourly RSI. So it us that there is no signs of a, uh, uh, we call it uh, exhaustion uh, in this uh, short term up move. Right? So yesterday it managed to also help above the 20 day moving average. So with that, right, I'll be using yesterday short term pivotal resistance level, which is at 1.0635. So this will be my upside trigger level to kind of uh, reinforce my uh, this short term bullish bias condition for today. Uh, break up above 1.635, potentially you could see a test on the next resistance level, which is so confluence at the 50-day moving average, and this uh, bunch of, uh, uh, we call it minor range resistance over here, 1.0735 slash 1.0760. Okay, so uh, potentially uh, any pullback should be holding above this uh, short-term pivotal support level at 1.055. So, however, if you start to see a breakdown of hourly close below 1.055, so that will actually invalidate uh, today's uh, potential short-term bullish bias condition to see a slide to retest uh, 1.0490 slash 1.045 level. Okay, so that for the euro dollar. Okay, so now, uh, very interestingly, right, if I were to see uh, something to take a look at would be the crosses. So one of the crosses right, I do take a look at over here is, uh, let's look at the cross here, this Aussie, uh, Aussie Yen. So Aussie Yen, right, yesterday it continued to rally over here. Okay, it rallied, but where it rallied, right, it actually now paused at this former resist, uh, support line, minor support line of 8th of September, now turns into a pullback resistance, okay? Roughly slightly at the 96 figure level over here, which is this uh, congestion zone here at this point in time. And also if you do the FIBO retracement from the last push down of 29th of September all the way to that unconfirmed uh, BOJ intervention on 3rd of October is 76.4% 76 FIBO retracement. So with that, right, if you could see over here is that the RSI has starts to actually slope downwards as well, okay? Given to us that yeah, price is going to push up in the last 24 hours, but RSI is sloping downwards, uh, close to the overbought region. So indicating to us that the last 24 hour push up is showing down uh, upside momentum losing strength. Okay, so potentially there could be at least a minor uh, bearish reversal around this price level over here. So I'll be using the 96 figure level as my key short term pivotal resistance. Downside trigger level potentially will be 9530, which is the 20 day moving average as well. A breakdown below it reinforce this minor bearish reversal uh, condition to test the next support at 9460. So, however, if we start to see an hourly close and a, and a clearance above this 96 figure level, then we'll start to see a squeeze up towards this uh, long term range resistance that is in place since October 207 uh, at 9660 slash 9688 level on the Aussie yet. All right, so now uh, that's pretty much sum up for the FX market, uh, the key highlights in the FX market on cover. So now let's immediately go to the XAU slash USD. So see, we're talking about related is a commodity. So if you recall that the XAU USD, yes, yesterday we do have a bullish bias condition with resistance at 1880 slash 1885. So now this level has almost been met already at uh, 1880 level, uh, then slightly above it is the 1885. So what's 1885 is the former swing low area of 21st of September now turns into a pullback resistance level and also close to the 50% FIBO retracement. And also not right now, the 20 day moving average is also acting as a resistance on it. So this last push up in the last 24 hour, so we could see the RSI now has started to shape a lower high over here at the overbought region, indicating to us that the last 24 hour push up may start, uh, has started to see a bit of uh, ups, upside momentum dissipating. So with that, uh, I'll be kind of a flipping to a short term uh, bearish bias condition for gold XAU slash USD using 1885 as the key short term pivotal resistance. Uh, first support to look out for will be 1860 level, a breakdown below 1860 level potentially could start to see this uh, minor bearish reversal condition to reinforce it to test the next support level at 1844. So what's 1844 is also this uh, formal swing low of 9th of October, uh, the swing low of 9th of October and as well as the FIBO retracement of 50% of this last push of this recent push up but however if we start to see a clearance with hourly close above 1885 then this bullish bias uh, should continue potentially to test the next uh, intermediate resistance which is close to the 50 day ma at 1904 
Then uh, upper boundary 1914, which is the medium term descending channel upper limit that is in place since 4th of May 2023 high. So that's for gold XAU slash USD. So now very quickly moving forward will be the stock indices. So for stock indices, let us start with the Hong Kong 33 first. So let me start with the daily chart since there's a lot of uh, news flow that's relating to this uh, China top policy makers trying to enact physical measure either indirect one or, or indirect or direct one so it seems to us that this is a daily chart of the hong kong 33 it's still going to actually congest over here but it seems to be forming the right shoulder of a bullish inverse head and shoulder formation that is in place since 10 of march last year uh, if you look at how the rsi goes over here the the, the rsi the macd macd has starts to turn up tick up and the way it tick up right it starts to form a higher low at a key support level key parallel support level all right, so what it means that price is going to dip down, okay, but the MACD starts to form a higher low. So it came to us that what we are seeing right now, right, there could be a further potential push up, at least, right, from this is a medium term perspective, I'm talking about multi weeks, to retest the 200 day moving average. So right now, right, the odds are, the current odds right now to actually retest whatever the low that was seen in 5th October right now, it seems to be getting lesser and lesser and as shown on the technical itself and also supported by this uh, ongoing uh, we call it fiscal uh, measures uh, either direct one or indirect one that is coming up from the china top policy makers at this point and also do not forget over here is that uh, if the fed were to be start cutting yes if there will be one more rate hike that is coming in but uh, given the fact that after this rate hike the fed will yes even though they will start to remain interest rate at high at this level but that could actually uh, start to see a bit of less downside pressure on the cnh given the interest rate differential shouldn't get wider between the us and china as us starts to stop hiking rates all right so now uh, with the short term technical right on the hansing uh, 33 index you see yesterday is it, it did appear up above our short term pivotal resistance uh. because initially yesterday we wanted to look for a at least a minor pull, pull back down towards the 20 day moving average but it seems to us that price going to pierce up above the 50 day moving average at this juncture so right now it's coming to test this uh 15 of september minor swing high area at 18,385 and given that the rsi is at the uh, overbought level again uh, no clear signs of a bearish divergence so potentially there could be at least a minor pullback right now to take shape so for today right today's session uh, i will have more of a neutrality stance to wait for the pullback to play up uh, before looking for a kind of a bullish bias condition again right given the fact that on the daily uh, technical on the hong kong, hong kong 33 is rather positive so for today right uh, neutral stance first because of the fact that the hourly rsi has started to uh, be pretty much on the overbought region, neutral between 18,385 and 18,020 on the uh, Hong Kong 33 index. All right, so right now, uh, what's cooking on the German 30? So German 30 also kind of, uh, sometimes it do have a, a, a direct correlation with China as well, given the fact that uh, a lot of what you call it, uh, a, a, a China, uh, we call it uh, consumer actually do purchase uh, European products, okay, in, in the, and in terms of what you call, and also the export and import uh, trade with China as well has been increased as well in Euro. So, so it do have a kind of a direct correlation. So with the fact that the Hong Kong 33 starts to pierce up as well, you see the German 30 index uh, starts to actually be rather rosy yesterday, clearing above the 20-day moving average. So yesterday we're still looking for a pullback down to play that uh, bearish bias uh, to below the 20-day moving average. So, but however, it starts to uh, see a rather a strong uh, short-term upside momentum. So what you could see over here is that for today, uh, I'll be uh, switching to a short-term bullish bias condition, holding above 15,370. RSI over here is holding around the overbought level, but no clear signs of a bearish divergence. It came to us that uh, upside momentum still remains pretty much intact on the shorter term. So uh, looking around this, uh, 15,370 to hold in any potential minor pullback. Then thereafter, potentially we we'll see a retest around the, this uh, 20, this moving average of this this uh, 15,560. Then followed by 15,690, which is close to the uh, 20 200 day moving average uh, and the 50 day moving average, as well as this uh, descending channel resistance that is in place since 31st of July high. But however, if you start to see a breakdown below 15,370, then uh, this potential, what you call it, uh, short term rebound will be in jeopardy to start to see a slide to retest 15,290. A breakdown below it potentially see a retest 
of the 9th October and 6th October minus swing low at 15,090 slash 15,045. Okay, so very quickly on the US indices. So Dow Jones, I'll share with you on the Dow Jones uh, chart, just now the daily chart on the cash market is rather weak. So for sure, if you look at the RSI, the RSI has started to shape a, 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 a pretty much clear bearish divergence over here, lower high, lower high. Whereas price action shows similar high at around the 20 day and the 50 day moving average. All right. So still no change using uh, 34,005 as a key short term pivotal resistance. So what I do over here is that uh, I will actually still look at the first support level to come in at 33,510. All right. Then, uh, however, if we start to see an hourly close uh, above 34,055, then this uh, bearish bias condition will be invalidated to see a squeeze up to test the 50 day moving average uh, acting as a resistance at 34,370. Okay, so that's for the uh, Dow Jones. So uh, very quickly on the Nasdaq 100. So Nasdaq 100 right now is uh, the squeeze up is actually hovering right at the key short term pivotal resistance we had for yesterday, 15,355. Uh, and if you look at the hourly RSI, the hourly RSI also start to shape that bearish divergence, uh, what we could see. So no change still maintaining this level. So first support level to watch out for will be the 50 day moving average, I think as a support. There's this zone over here, 15,100 slash 15,050. But however, if we start to see an hourly close above 15,355, then this uh, bearish bias condition will be invalidated to see a squeeze up to retest this minor range resistance that in place since 4th of September at 15,540. All right, so that's a pretty much sum up for today's uh, daily dose of market insights. Now I'll share with you all the key highlights and the key short term technical and uh, outlook on these various asset classes. So with that, uh, I wish you all a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.